Shield there, dude. Even even the damn Gromp oh is throwing goodness. the tongue out there, dude. That's another one over to Joshi now as you direct our count down to the bottom lane. A beautiful wow. bullet time does shred everyone at the bottom here, but Pangu Soul is able to try to come with a double TP from Anti. Looking to find Roth, but the flash allows. Oh. Are there while well, you know Doki with the quickness? That is a massive knock up coming in now with a beautiful bullet time to be able to follow up and a lot of damage over to RLS. Out because they're able to take out War Leader now, but it does mean the death of Doctor. Demon Girls looking to try to stay alive, but there is no escape for the side of RLS. And oh Ty's looking to 1v9. Can he do it? No. He cannot. And that's going to be the ace already. I'm not going to make you gift 100 subs, dude. I get it. It's all right, man. <laughs> it's going to be okay, dude. But there's the potential pick. Oh, dude, but War Leader just gets annihilated. TP now going to be able to come for the Sinja, but right into the line is Zenton's able to uh, escape. Double ooh. kill over to Elf. Oh, Elf wow. is still alive, and he is fighting his soul. Outside jungle trying to, you know, get themselves back some control in advance of the Baron. But at this stage of the game, it's just too rough. I mean, it was quite fun seeing War Leader getting a little bit ring around the Rosies by Zen Zen with the, uh, <laughs> with, the um, with, with his little grapple. But nevertheless, uh, escape's going to be left without, um, you know, left out to dry, and that is going to be game five. I'm telling you, man, the way Rafa played this one in the dine, I feel like this was a dude that was okay. And here we are, that bittersweet end to a beautiful five-game series. Welcome back to FOF Esports, where we find ourselves now in game number five. It is winner take all. No mistakes left behind. RLS versus Rex Regalis. It's been a pleasure casting so far. Lolo, here we go for game five. Let's go, Schnecki. This has been such a back and forth series. These guys have been trading blows like nobody's business, and uh, it's going to be just who is able to just get that lead and just manage to snowball the game. That's been the name of the game for this series thus far. And uh, we are seeing very standard bands or very similar bands. Lots of focus towards the top side. anti B, all of, all of his stuff being taken off the table. No set, no Gwen, no Irelia. And the Akshan, I was thinking about this. That's being taken off the table as well. 100% win rate so far this series, I believe. And neither of these mid laners, they've said, okay, both, they both said, okay, dude, you're pretty good on Akshan. I'm not going to let you have that one more time. <laughs> Right, and in return, we actually had a bit of a game of chicken here to where we've had Misfortune picked three out of the four games from the side of Rex, and they left it open to see since we haven't seen an MF all game from RLS, and it ends up going to them for that blue side pick, man. Super dangerous, leaving it up for blue side. We're going to see what the response is now from Rex. Oh, that's right. The Orn was left open. That is Joshi's number two, second to only his Shen. Yes, it is. And uh, with the Nard taken off the table, no surprises there. And Rafa, wow. Rafa's picking up that Nocturne. He said, War Leader, I'd shut you down the previous game, but you ain't shutting me down, baby. I've got this um, this Nocturne. I'm going to be coming in. I'm going to be making the place happen. And yeah, already Rex, they've got some comfort on the table. They've got huge amounts of engage in the fights. How are RLS going to respond to this? Let's see. And we do see a couple of really good support picks still up here to be able to pair up with the MF. Leona is up. Although we have seen Demon Grove play a lot of really good enchanters throughout the course of this year, 
We're gonna have to see what it's paired up with here. Oh the no, man, that shockwave and an MF bullet time combo, super disgusting. It is, and as you said, Leona's available, Amumu's available. They've got loads of ways of, of shutting this down. I mean, Jarvan's not banned this game either. They've got loads of ways <laughs> of just getting getting that ma that miracle combo off. So something that Rex are gonna have to draft against. Let's see what they pick up here. It is wow. gonna be that Leona, that that real kind of kill threat bot lane. And as you said, Shineki, they've got the the huge shockwave, the the, the uh, solar flare, the bullet time. This is something that Rex are gonna have to be ready for. Well, I mean, look, in Orn, you do have the call, the Forge God, to be able to really use that mm -hmm. ulti, knock out the MF out of the open. But the time it goes forward and back and knocks up, MF has almost all of her bullets already out here. So we have a bit of a counter engage as well as a good engage in general, especially coming from the Nocturne as well, man. But the Wombo combo out of RLS, we need to see something. Tristana is the response here. Look, you do have your ultimate as a displacement to throw the Buster Shot when MF throws a bullet time, but there's a lot of moving parts here, Lolo. Yeah, it is. And of course, this is most likely going to be sitting on alt battery. I mean, it is a potential flex into the mid lane, but um, with that Orianna already on the table, I think Rex are basically, they, they are holding, they have already made their first pick with Yawn. So once again, Anti does have some opportunity to um, go for something that he thinks might be able to go into it. Of course, not a very easy champion to solo kill. Once again, a bit like the Tom Kench we saw previously. Now, uh, unsurprisingly, Rex are going to be looking towards things they think they don't want to draft against, like the Poppy, more top bands potentially. And on the other side, of course, RLS are going to be prioritizing that support, which is still yet to be picked up for Rex. Yeah, I mean, I really like that Braum taken away there. Having that unbreakable there to throw up that shield and mm. block a lot of the MF damage. You're not going to get through that and the Orn there when you're trying to throw the ulti. So I do think it is a really crucial ban. However, if that was on Rex Regalis' agenda, I think they would have probably taken that third pick over picking the Tristana when there's still a lot of options to pair up with the Braum there. So maybe you've dodged a little bit of a bullet here. And of course, we're going to get the Valkaz ban. Look it, man. Zen Zen, we've seen it. Game yeah. two, disgusting. Get it out of here. Yeah, I think I think this is a very smart ban because he did really put on a show against Pengu Sol's Oriana and allowing him for a slightly more favorable matchup, something that Wall Leader won't have to put so much time into, is going to allow him free free reign across the map. Now, uh, Rex, they do still have the support to be picked up here. Uh, there are lots of options still on the table. The Rakan is still up, of course. They um, why you know Doctor absolutely smurfing on that previous game. Um, but otherwise, you know, they the, the the mid is still yet to be picked here. It is going to be an alley uh, to be picked up with this Tristana alley. An interesting response into the uh, MF and Leona. It does provide that disengage. It does allow him to get onto the back line along with the Nocturne and the Yawn. Try to stop this Miracle Engage from going off. Get on that back line. Shut them down early. Um, but on the other side of RLS, we do have the jungle yet to be picked up. The top and jungle. This is where they've been so strong throughout the series and the league in general. Anti and Wall Leader working so well together. That is... Wow. wow. Okay. Throw okay. a J4 and I swear I'm walking out of my house right now. If you throw a J4 on there, that is the utmost craziest combo we can probably draft here for the side of RLS. Time is slowly ticking down. So far, we have a really big front line to pair up with the Oriana Shockwave and the Misfortune. Luckily, we do have a very big front line as a response from Team Rex Regalis in the Alistar and in the Orn. We do have Vi. Oh, let's go! Oh, we got a really filthy engage here. War Leader oh, on the wow. Vi, dude. Can we ask for anything better for this game five? This is insane. These guys have said, okay, we've been trading blows, but this is going to be an all-out brawl in this final game. <laughs> Both of these sides looking to go for the big fights. And that is where we've seen throughout the league, they are such strong team fighters, the best in the league. And we've seen amazing stuff from them on both sides this series. Such a huge engage, as you said, on the side of RLS, but so much disengage from the side of Rex. And that's going to be a Ziggs picked up there. You get more disengage, long range, able to control space in the fight. This is going to be a really interesting one, but I'll be honest, if, Re if RLS mm. can pull this off, I love what they've drafted here. This is full on spice. Definitely so, man. And while I do think this Ziggs is a bit of a flex pick here, we have information that Zen Zen does like to play that Ziggs in the mid lane, but a Tristana swap to abuse Ori early mm. on, Ziggs to play safe in lane might be okay, but based on this draft, as is, as stands, game five, what are your thoughts, Alu? What are your expectations for this game five? 
I do like what you said there, Schnecki. I think that one of the the key things here is that what why you know Doctor is able to do with that Alistair and what Demon Girl is able to do in response. Because when the supports have been able to get around the map and just uh, make plays happen, it really has favored Rex. But um, if if War Leader on this Vi is able to get his, his pace going, unlike the previous game, I think that RLS have stand a really good chance here. They've got such a great team fight engaged. We'll just see if they can pull it off. Well, you know what they say here. I guess we'll hold off on that as I do believe we are in a pause here. You know, you know what that was there, Lolo? They were like, man, mm -hmm. dude, we got Schnecki and Lolo about to go sicko mode on this cast. We got Team RLS about to go crazy. Team Rex Regalis about to be unchained one more time. Let's throw a pause and allow them to go over this draft. So I do think we have a couple more seconds to look here. What are we expecting here? Early game because we got a lot of different moving parts here, Lolo. Absolutely, and I think that um, with this uh, kind of these two rocks trading blows up there in the top side, I think it's really going to be all around about the bot lane. Um, the uh, we've seen thus far that which whoever manages to get the bot side uh, going early in terms of uh, allowing their support to get around, as I said, is the one who's going to make things happen. And um, War Leader, whether he is going to prioritize trying to get takeaway Zen Zen Ziggs, not a particularly easy champion to gank, but uh, with the Leona the Vi, the MF, they will be able to have some pressure on that bot side. So we'll just have to see what happens. But I'm looking for, I'm just looking for an exciting game five. Let's go. Absolutely. And as they say, time waits for no man and definitely not us. Game five. Here we are. FOF. Ready to go. As we already oh, have escape. a bit of a cheeky play. We have the entire Team Rex all ready to rock here. But escape. Not going to fall for it. I feel like there's a big X on the map in that specific brush because that has been such a pivotal brush in so many of these games thus far. And both sides have tried stacking it. We've seen, you know, we've seen MF ultis go through that to completely change the way of fights. And um, it, I mean, no surprises there. This is exactly what Rex like to do. They like to stack chokes, but they're just, you know, they're just fishing for an engage. But RLS, they, you know, these teams know each other. They're not going to be walking up. They know, they know the sort of things these teams would try and they're not going to throw it away on a game five. Definitely not. And already, we're looking at these summoner spells now. We, we see the double TP here when we look at the mid lane and top lane for mm -hmm. both players. We cannot leave any stone left un unturned here. You need to be able to have that rotation potential for the late game. So I don't expect, yeah, although we've been having the Battle of the Joshes top side all damn series mm -hmm. here. I don't expect much on this one early game here. Lolo, as we do wait for that pause, um, I do want to point out we're looking at elk battery here in that bottom lane i think this is beautiful look at this is a guy who knows how to play aggressive and who flourishes making those plays i mean hell how many times have we seen elk on the mf going in in the front line throwing out some cues throwing out some autos getting yes, some double ups uh... out playing aggressive what the hell else better than a tristana with an exhaust and an alley with an ignite Absolutely. I really love the Exhaust Ignite combo. I agree with you, Schnecki. I think this is just so much stronger. I think that while Escape, yes, has prioritized the heal, it is very useful at getting, uh, keeping your um, your teammates alive, getting some extra movement speed. That Exhaust is so good for the 1v1. So if there's any moment where Alk and Escape are left on an island in that bot side, then Alk is definitely going to be looking for that kill. Right, and we did have word again, guys. Our production is just so amazing. They're always keeping us informed on what is going on. They actually had to do a pause so they can clear some of the blood off of the battlefield from the last yes, four uh... games, making sure it's all clean, even playing fields. No red rivers quite yet. And we're going to allow some time for these teams to kind of get a hold of themselves here. Let's be honest here. It has been a long night, but it has not been long enough. As here we go at the 130 mark, right in time for the jungle and minions to spawn. We'll see what happens. Absolutely. And as I said, both of these top laners now, they're going to get leashed up there on the top side. Of course, these are both utility uh, top laners who are happy to let the push early. They're just going to be trading blows, more of a wet noodle fight. Battle of the Joshes, it's a long fight this time around. But both of these junglers looking to be go down there into that bot side, try to get their carries ahead. Absolutely so. We already see a bit of a battle for that level 2 advantage when you have a Leona and an Alistar. Very heavy engaged support oriented um, supports here. You'll want to see them play for it. I do think RLS did push it a little bit too fast. Even if they do it level 2, you can't really find much of an engage as it is in that safe zone for Team Rex bot side. Yes, and it does look like RLS are going to be able to get the push here, get themselves the level 2. Leona's so scary in the level 2 early on, so... Um... Rex are going to have to, our battery, one in a doctor, they're going to have to back up a little bit here, but 
as we can see, just a little bit of trading blows up there in the top side. And now um, Rafa did delay his clear a bit by going up, up there to get his Krug. So he is going to be a little bit slower down there into the river as composed to uh, to War Leader. So War Leader is going to get potentially the um, the jump onto the um, onto the river, but we'll uh, we'll have to see whether he uh, you know gets contested with Zenzen being able to get the push. Yeah, and look. Although Tristana, passive, essentially perma shoves wave, we do have Demon Grill and Escape doing a very good job when you have the passive mm -hmm. from MF. You also get a lot of damage here. And traditionally, Tristanas do not do very well farming under tower. Your passive no. tends to blow up, do some damage, tough to CS, tough to farm. And we had Bolt Jungler starting topside, so we're going to really have to emphasize what happens for this first scuttle. Yes, absolutely. And... Um... It's going to be, I mean, it's actually quite even now um, in the in, on both lanes at the moment. Pengu and Zen Zen trading very aggressively. This does uh, favor the Oriana, of course, with the Corrupting Potion. She's going to be able to sustain that back up, but it doesn't look right. like either of them are going to get to the fight just yet, but it does look like the junglers are meeting in the river. Well, look, as it did look like Rafa was backing out first, we do have Alk and Wayno Doctor being able to rotate first, so it actually might have to back War Leader off for now as we are looking at the mini-map. Yes, we did have Rafa, yes, Rafa being got able it. to secure that scuttle. Yes, Rafa, he's, he's definitely had the drop on War Leader in this early game, especially in the past two games, and that has really made the difference for allowing Rex to get those early advantages. So he's going to back there in the tri brush. He doesn't look like he's going to be able to go for anything with uh, our battery and Wayano Doctor having the push, but nevertheless, that's already a big win for him. It's going to force War Leader to delay his back and go take that uh, scuttle on the top side. Again, we see this top side here, as we expected. We've seen a lot of back and forth trades throughout this series, man. But I think both Joshes were like, you know what, man? Look at dude. We're both good people. We're both good at the game of League of Legends. Let's just settle for we're both good at being Josh. So not much fighting over here. Might have spoke too soon. Anti is low. Again, we have Flash Ooh, on Joshi. Rafa. Might have spoke too soon. We're out here manifesting as we're speaking as Rafa now already making his Baby. way to the top lane is anti. Look at it try to escape now. Able to dodge the searing charge damage from Joshi, but oh, Flash no. will be fleed. The fear is out. Anti runs screaming like it's Halloween day, but he cannot find his way home. First blood again over to the side of Team Rex. Yeah, anti really, he's very very aggressive play there not not recognizing that rafa would be back up at his top side after that clear and taking the bot side scuttle but either way that's going to give rafa an early game lead and that has really made the difference for rex in these games thus far uh yep. it is going to put war leader a little bit ahead on camps but nevertheless that's going to i mean anti is going to actually walk back to lane in fact he's going to maintain the tp advantage because uh joshi did in fact burn his flash in that exchange so he is going to have that if something does break out down here on the bot side to get himself oh, absolutely. A, a lead and that's actually where he's really been able to make things happen so far in this series with the gwen particularly so we'll see if he does go for that but at the moment it does look like uh our battery and why you know doctor they're going to be able to get themselves a bit of a push and sheet a recall yeah, and look at Lolo. Well, maybe Speaking not, of making things happen, man, we're going to take a step to look at our second monitor here at, at the uh, Twitch stream. This is the first time FOF Esports without raids has ever been Let's above go. 100 views. So if you guys can get your Twitter fingers into trigger fingers and spam some damn emotes in chat, it is now the time. As we go back to 99, the moment I say that, dude, I'm telling you, man, Caster nah, Curse nah. actually transits into IRL. Nah, man. Um, you know, you, you, you know what? In, in in the immortal words of some of the FGC commentators I used to watch, just press some buttons, stream. I want you press some buttons as we see them going in. Well, asking he shall receive is Leona going to use the Zenith Blade while you know is able to try to flash away, but here comes Rafa, able to go oh, to wow. the fight now. Paranoid now going to be active here. Exhaust going to be down. War Leader cannot quite get out of the fight now as there's the rocket jump. No, I'm tight. Reset, and that's a double kill. Rafa is able to take oh. it there. Oh, I think we had um, the TP actually cancelled as well i could be mistaken it was, there. yes it was wow that's disastrous now that was pengu's tp in fact but yes. that's disastrous for rls they lose the tp and i mean war leader was five throughout that rafa with that early priority was able to get that kill onto anti on the top side he hits six he comes in picks himself up another two kills and he's already monstrous on this nocturne look man we talked all throughout the series how a lot of that 
playmaking potential really relies on Rafa, and he's not even here right now. And why is there oh. going to be going forward there? Old Tinaka going to quiet land, and Zenden looking to try to go for the kill, but Pangu is able to survive. But back to Rafa, man. He's the real man of the hour here. He's already 3-0. and But look, man, I cannot help but get flashbacks six weeks ago in his yes, game uh... versus INT. He was playing Kha'Zix. He was 7-0. and He ended up giving away a really big shutdown and did not carry. Pressure's on Rafa. He's going to oh, look Lolita. to try to escalate oh. a little bit further now. There's a knockup. Rafa going for four. Rafa wants more. Demon Girl going to get CC into their own place, even though they're the CC masters themselves. Doctor's able to take the kill with the Ignite now as the scoreboard shows five to one. Rafa's got to be grinning. And you talked about nerves for Rafa, which I agree with you, Schnecki. He's definitely been one who maybe get, when he gets in his own head, think he can has to carry games that he might actually falter a little bit. But at the moment, Wall Reader is the one who's overstepping there. That was a very questionable attempt to, uh, to dive in the mid lane. And the mid lane's just not been his friend all season long. We saw it with the Zac against the Zen Zen Velkos a couple of yeah. games ago. And now, now it's... That this Vi is so far behind and this champion. Yeah. She does have an engage, but she's absolutely useless if she doesn't get if she falls behind early and this Nocturne now 4-0. and oh. Rafa is in a position to already 1v9 this game. There's a five you know there's I, almost yeah. a 3k gold lead, and it's like it's eight minutes in. You know what I think it was, Lolo? I think what happened was before this game came, Rafa put down his headset. He put down his keyboard. Everything on his desk. Oh Demon girl's in a bad spot. Looking to go back in now. Very good MF bullet time. There's the stun. Alex looking for more. Demon Girl in a bit of a bad spot. There's the flash ulti. And that's another kill over to Alk here. Escape is looking to help out. Meanwhile, we're looking at Rafa. This dude put his darn mouse down. He put his headset down. He put his hands in the air. And he called upon the energy of his entire Raw family discord. And he's channeling this spirit bomb as we speak. We're four kills down here, Lolo. We're going to have to see how much energy he's brought to the table. I think it's RLS. They're going to have to be channeling a spirit bomb. Oh, my God. He does pick it up. Oh, man. And that's just going to instantly get the kill, dude. I don't think he was able to pick it up as well. No, he didn't. No. I is still there. They weren't able to get value out of it. And now Joshi's making sure Anti can't waddle his way down to the Rift Herald pit. Over Yana now looking to try to move forward, but he just can't get there. This is looking grim. Team Rex oh, it's, it's all on the side apart. of red. They're so far ahead. They're not, they didn't manage to get the Herald either. That is disastrous. So that's just Wall Leader falling even further behind. He's a, he's a bit down on CS, but now there's already a, a, Gw a Gwinsu Rage. Sorry. Yeah, Yomu's, excuse me. A Yomu's Ghostblade coming out for the side of Rafa. He's going full Ballistic Missile Nocturne in this game. He's saying, I'm so far ahead. I can jump on any of your carries. I can destroy them at the moment. So, so much lethality. They're at a point where ah, nerves are really showing for RLS right now. This is the make or break moment right now because they're already 3K behind, three and a half even, at only 10 minutes. And they're in all win conditions. They've played so well this series in terms of, um, you know, team fights and um, navigating choke points, just responding to Rex. But Rex is far ahead. What do they do? You got to look for something. You have to find a play with that combo. Look at when all is said and done, dude. All it takes is one massive fight, and you have those stacking ultimates here. As again, I think I'm lagging on my end. I do believe we have the dragon being started. Um, okay, maybe not. <laughs> I heard some sounds as my screen was frozen. But we do have a good setup here from the side of Team Rex. Demon Girl's kind of walking right into oh, the depth. No. The vice still there. That's going to be a big knockup. Paranoid now going to be active as Rob is going to try to get into position. Ooh, nice. Demon Girl going to be low. Nice. Big ulti coming out. That's going to be a second kill now over to RLS. Doctor can't survive. Vice now here. Rafa's right there. Oh, no. Leader's now in a bit of a bad spot. Looking to try to escape now, but the fear oh. is going to grind his health bar to shreds. Reds. He is able to escape. Half health. Dragon's up. And talking of escape, escape does manage to pick up a kill there. Oh no. Oh, dude, the cheeky control board there. Rafa clicks oh. R. Man, dude, Rafa literally full on Naruto ran. His, his hands are still behind his back right now. That's how full fledged he went forward. Oh, man. I love that skin, by the way. You can Beyblade with it. If you've ever yeah. been, it's really fun. <laughs> um, but nevertheless, yeah, I mean, Escape does crucially manage to pick up a kill. He is, you know, trying to get some kill, some uh, some gold on the board, but that's going to be a Drake. It is a slightly later Drake this time. No super early soul from the side of Rex. It's another win condition for them right now. But there are so few things. I mean, Anti has not been able to get into the fray yet at all. 
He's had to TP back to lane just to stay, you know, ahead and not let Joshi get too much of a push. But Joshi's got TP advantage. So does Zen Zen's got his as well. And yeah, the bot lane are running a clinic. And not to mention this, this Nocturne's now six and zero. So at the moment, they're getting pushed in in all three lanes. And whilst there isn't a Drake or a, or a Herald quite yet on the table, I mean, at this point, I think RLS are just going to have to try and sit and get themselves some key item spikes so they can get into the fight later on. All right, Joshi, let's not let this happen. What happened last nice. time? That is a really good ultimate there from Anti. He is able to stay alive. Oh, hello? And now there's the response, man. Joshi is up go. full and victim of the gank now. War Leader says, look, man, he got his finger into the blood of the dead Malphite, rubbed it on his cheeks, and says, I am the damn war guard here, Rafa, and I'm coming for you. One, okay. one kill at a time. One kill at a time. <laughs> Yes, sir. Signs of life. Signs of life now yes. for the side of RLS. But they've got to be careful. Wall uh, Rafa, excuse me, he is lurking right now. He oh, is yeah. unchained. And, I mean, they are getting a kill here or there. Yes, it is going on to the right members. The Vice, he's got something on the board. But now... With them, with the push just continuing, we now get to see the other thing that Tristan is pretty good at. Not just, you know, coming in and doing burst damage. Look at those plates go. Yeah, we have a lot of gold going back. Uh, again, I do want to shift our focus to a potential team fight still here. Even this can still go in their favor, even though Alk is ahead by a little bit here um, in terms of the 2v2. Although Escape does have Gale Force, you can have a really good combo when it comes to even just Leona MF. You can absolutely shred an entire front line and a back line here, Lolo. Yes, I wouldn't absolutely. quite count them out yet. They're no, down a bit of gold, but by no means are they out. No, and crucially... Yes, Escape, he's getting his items on deck. He's got the Gale Force now. Uh, and as you said, we, we talked about in Draft, of course, they have this gigantic Miracle Engage. They've got the Unstoppable Force. They've got the Shockwave. They've got the the, 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 um, the Bullet Time, the Solar Flare. They've got everything they need to make a massive team fight happen. And that's what they're going to be waiting for now. It's going to be the gold lead. It isn't too bad at the moment. It's not un unwinnable, as you said, Shneki. And if they can stall out to uh, get themselves a big team fight, they're still very much in this. Yeah, we're going to have to really um, answer the age-old adage and question of what happens when an unstoppable force meets that immovable object in Absolutely. Team Rex here. We have Orn as a big front line, a lot of backline pressure, and then there's Rafa. Um, oh, a, a solo one-man wrecking crew if he really wants to be here. So he does have a lot of the eggs in his basket here, Lolo. Pressure is yeah. up, man. It's time for Rafa to shine. And... But, I mean, as you said, Shneki, we talked about, um, oh, okay. okay, good flash. Yep, that's fine. But he is, his build, his build is full on 1v9 potential, but it is all or nothing. True. He has all no tankiness whatsoever. Hold on. Wow. Ooh. Okay, man. Um, out battery to strap the damn bomb and uh, escape could not find their life here. Doctor okay. does go oh. down in response, but that does go over to Demon Girl. Yeah, not ideal, but... And, of course, it does mean that escape's delayed a little bit. Uh, but nevertheless, um, as we were talking about, yeah, I, I was going to say that Rafa, yes, his build is... He's got some steel caps now, but nevertheless, he will still go down very easily. He doesn't have the stride breaker. He's not building anything too bruisery. So he is still very, very squishy. And if they do get onto him, they could just blow him up. And that is where a lot of this gold lead is sitting right now. Not to mention Joshi, of course, yeah. who, you know, is, is tanky as hell. But they could, they, they could just try to ignore him. Just try to ignore him in the fights, Lolo. you know. Let me let me find out you're out here trying to cast your curse Rafa into building a guardian danger right now, man. Let oh, me find out. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> I mean, it, oh, it's it, it's a good shout. It's a good shout. Maybe not. Maybe not build two. He's got the lethality there, so most likely, I mean, he'll probably go towards his um his lethality item next. But we'll, yeah. I mean, his mythic. But we'll see. Um, either way, the Drake spawning in um one minute's time and. Uh, once again, it is going to be Rex taking control of that river. They've got the they've got all the vision they need with the scuttle, and it looks like they might be going for another pick. Rafa doesn't have ult. Okay. Ooh, that's a really good hex flash. It is on the Leona though. She doesn't even play forward. Zen Zen's now going to be in the ruckus of things. That is a nice ulti. The bullet time will be coming out. Rafa is able to walk oh. away. Flash the unstoppable force. Anti still alive. TP now going to be coming from. Oh my the goodness. Here. He's looking to try to get the ultimate off there. Will be able to land the two man knockup. Escapes now going to be running away. Oh, wait. Anti force and flash. There's a kill back. Gold on to escape. AD carry needs it. Pengu barely almost getting hit by the explosive bomb that is on top of the. 
ally support. He is still alive. Tower not looking so hot. Things are looking grim. Tower going to be falling here. There's the re oh, really going to be going forward to the back line now, but the ulti from Rob was able to try to help him out and instantly take out the enemy Vi. Godlike he goes. Alk Battery still going to be alive, walking back to the Raptor pit. And it's Team Rex who has to reset as Dragon now ready for spawn. Yes, and Dragon's up and War Leader is down, so that is all going to be Rex. They've got full control of also the bot side jungle and Demon Gold can't walk up. This is what Rex do best. They're going to take as many advantages on the map as possible with that little lead they got. So that's a red buff going over to our battery. That's a Drake. That's going to be another Mountain Soul. That's been the name of this series thus far. And it's going to be closing us out on one more. And that's a, that's a not too early, but it is still um, a soul point potentially on the cards in five minutes time for Rex. Uh, we did see a bit of an overextension going back in the mid lane. And we did see, of course, that Rafa, he's got no flash now. He is still very susceptible to that bullet time if he gets caught in it. So he's got to be a little bit careful. That death yeah. ball combination from... Uh, oh, I don't know about this one, Lolo. Yeah. And why, you know, Doctor, uh, I mean, he, look, he's looking to try to soak the damage. A very good TP is going to allow Zenza to come to the fight. It does burn TP, so it does still get a lot of value off of the engage from the side of RLS. But no casualties quite yet. No casualties quite yet. That is going to be another TP down. It is Zen Zen's. Uh, it's um, not too much of a problem. He's going to be able to go back and continue to clear to clear waves in the mid lane, get themselves some priority on this second Herald should they want it. Joshi, of course, has all the priority he needs up there in the top side. So RLS, they are still very much pushed back. Um, this top turret, it is going to go down slowly, but it does look like they will be taking control of that river once again and get themselves that second Herald, continue to snowball their advantage. They're looking to uh, really translate that snowball slowly into an avalanche here. We do have Rift Herald already getting low. Where leaders trying to get into position here, but a very big front line into Joshi. Why, you know, uh. Doctor just headbutts in, walks right back out. And that's going to be Rift Herald now over to Rafa. Two dragons already going to be down as well. A lot of objective pressure, and this is this exact setting in which Rex likes to play the damn game. There's the engage. Now, Rafa with the counter engage, able to get the shot wave. Oh. Now, Rafa almost going to be taken out of bullet time, able to try to help out. Why, you know, Doctor now getting low. Look at escape, navigate through the fights as he's bobbing and weaving bullet times back and Fourth left and right, up and down, and now RLS take the shutdown on the AD carry, and here's the replay. Oh, and we'll, and just such a clutch um, shockwave. We'll see it in a second from um, from Pengu Soul there. We'll, um, Rafa goes in immediately. We are going to be a little bit delayed, but so far, obviously, no um, no uh, contestation on this Herald whatsoever. They do get knocked back by Why You Know Doctor, but now Rafa he sees this as a potential opportunity. They are going to try and take control of the choke point as. The blue is going to be picked up, but Joshi, he's going to try to get himself into position there. They're going to try to go on him a bit of a bait because now Rafa's going to come in. But look at this shockwave. Immediately, it stops him, gets him out of the way, and suddenly the bullet time comes out. That's, some I think, a thousand gold. Garid immediately going to escape. He picks up even more. Suddenly, this is a big MF, and they don't get any more from that. That's actually a huge win for RLS. They'll take that any day because now suddenly they have a carry. They definitely do, guys, and don't mind Lolo going absolute sicko mode right now, showing us that you can also play by play too. Man, that that's a damn recap, Lolo. You ain't holding back right now. Game five, okay. <laughs> oh go, man, it was it. a long replay. <laughs> yeah, dude, it was it, it was it was there, man. It was trailing, dude. But here we are. Look, very big shutdown. I didn't want to say it earlier, and I did. We've seen a game, INT, week four or week five. Before the playoffs, Rafa was 7-0. Kha'Zix, very ahead, ended up dying. Big shutdown, enemy team won. I don't want to say it. I don't want to think it into existence, dude, because I believe in the law of manifestation. Yeah. But this is looking very, very eerily similar to what we've seen that game. But Rafa does not want to crumble under the pressure. He still has Rift Herald. Back to the jungle he goes. Yeah, he's got a stopwatch as well. I think you're very right there, Schnecki. He will be most likely moving towards the GA as his third item so he can ballistic missile in again and just um, have have time to get followed up on. Um, but you are right. This is the point where it really does test his mental because as you said, you have seen before that he's in such a strong carry position. But okay, here we go. Okay, he's looking for the 1v2. Flash, you're going to be forced now with the Xena Blade able to provide a little bit of pill. Joshi's getting into position. Ulti is up. Flash is ready. TP shortly on cooldown. We're going to have the reset, but that is a crucial element to keep MF alive. Flash is no longer. Absolutely. I think he heard us, by the way, Shineki. He said, look, I am fully confident right now. I'm just going to go in. I'm, he's definitely not ready to, to crumble just yet, even though, you know, he, let's not remind ourselves, he is gigantic still. And, Dude, absolutely. I mean, 
And this Tristana as well. I mean, she's been picking up so many kills in the fight. Our battery also sitting on two items. He is a real force to be reckoned with. No one on RLS right now. The Malphite, he does have quite a lot of armor, but he will still go down. The Vi as well. So... RLS, they do have that potential. They can win a crucial team fight. This game is still anyone's game. It's a big gold lead, but the Drake's coming up in a one minute's time, and it's gonna it's a sole point. It's gonna be one that RLS are gonna have to fight for. I completely agree, and we're already seeing them looking to try to take control of the choke oh, points. Wow. Beautiful misfortune. Oh, now Rafa, Rafa. going to be going gold. Where they're looking to try to help Rafa. out. They're going to take one down. Rafa ends up falling again. There's the re-engage for the Orn call. Oh, wow. The Forge God now is anti. They're going to try to escape. A couple of fights going on at once. Doctors are going to try to flash out. They're going to try to move into the position here. A little bit of damage is going to be coming down there, but it is going to be a two for one. Rafa being the sacrificial lamb to allow two more kills to take control of mid, to take control of the bottom half of the map. Dragons up in 30. Are RLS looking to defend the tier 2 turret. And yeah, we're going to go sl slowly back into... Oh, we're not actually going to go into a replay here. We are just going to see them take the mid-tier turret here. And, I mean, RLS, they do manage to get another kill onto Rafa, but he's lost his uh, bounty at this point. The bounty, that 1k gold they re they crucially need is sitting on alt battery. And alt battery now, Rafa doesn't have to be worried too much anymore because this is a Tristana that will just carry the game on her own. They still have Herald, by the way. So with Rafa going down there, they weren't able to press their objective on mid for too much longer. But now, that show point once more... Um, they've got no vision in their bot side jungle. Joshi is lying in wait for escape. Okay, Rafa is going to pull the trigger. He's a little bit deep, though. He has to flash away already. Cena Blade going to be going forward. The ultimate for the misfortune is oh, not escape. quite there. There is no bullet time. There is no damage to re-engage for the fight. <gasps> it will be one for one. Supports will trade their lives. Rafa is low here, Lolo. Riff Herald has to be dropped. Hands no longer glowing purple. War Leader going to be moving forward. Anti has ulti. He can re-engage. Escape ult. Coming up a cooldown. Oh my goodness! Ten seconds to go. Beautiful double. Lot of damage. There's the bomb. Oh, Pocket. wow. Zendin and able to come in clutch, man. And that's the sole point over to Rex. Oh, wow. And there was a moment there where they could have made something happen. The bullet time wasn't quite up, but that Mega Inferno bomb just said, no, guys, it's get out of this game. Wow, that was absolutely clutch there and it came off of all the vision they had in that bot side jungle that just allowed him to pin it up pinpoint it so beautifully and that is going to be a massive advantage the herald is still casually walking our way down the mid lane as well oh so this is God. even more advantages warrior that's got out this is really bad, Lolo. War Leader is going to have to flash. Maybe he flashes right into the hands of Rafa. He's still looking to escape. Riff Herald ended up skipping and flashing as they're now dashing to the tier three turret. It is going to be falling down now. 10 on MF, 13 on Pangu's soul. Riff Herald taking the last final headbutt of the mid lane inhibitor. And that's going to be a lot of pressure. Baron is up. Team Rex in a very good spot. Oh, it's a massive spot right now. They've got almost a nine, eight and a half k gold lead already, and they get once again. Let's see what Rex do. They take control. They take. They don't take an inch. They take a foot. They take more. They've taken the whole of the top side jungle as well. They've got the mid tier in with the uh, the Baron is up as well. They're gonna try to get an up battery. Okay, I mean, he doesn't have the escape any longer. He's looking a bit rough here. Doctor's trying to help him out a little bit, oh, there, but no! he just cannot quite keep him alive. And no! I now want a little bit more. Seismic Shard getting tossed out of the back of the damn beast. Doctor's looking to provide a little bit of pill for the rest of the team. And Zenzen okay. going to be going forward with the bombs that he handcrafted from all the gunpowder in China. But he still cannot return kills. Two are now down. RLS is up. Do this? Baron's now ready. Oh my god, this is such a Hail Mary! They're all so low, wall leader is They can't do it, no, they've got to back away. Oh, and Joshi will let him! Whoa, I don't know about that one, man. Malphite ult will be able to cancel it, but a lot of damage from the Zig. They're able to find another one now. Is Rafa going to be going forward with the MF bullet time? Going to find a little bit of damage onto the front line. One for one. So far as Joshi looking to re-engage, takes a searing charge, flashes out, escape goes down. Only one left. Five are up. There's the ace for the side of Team Rex. A lot of minions in the base here and a lot of damn casualties. Yeah, and it, I mean, they, they they are going to TP and go for the Baron, but at this stage, I mean, well, there's nothing RLS can do. They, they're all down. They're going to have to go and, and sink to their Nexus turrets. And just a desperation move from them trying to start that Baron. The health bars were too low. They didn't expect, respect the Mega Inferno Bomb once again. And great presence from Joshi there to use the Call of the Forge God, stop their backs and just get more and more advantages. and. I mean, they've got the Baron now. They have the mid inhib down. They can just sit on side lanes. Joshi's unmatchable. I mean, Rafa can just um, can hover anybody else. I mean, old battery's pretty unmatchable as well right now. Look at him. And 
the souls coming up as well in two and a half minutes time RLS, they really, they're going to have to turtle this one out. They still have that win condition if they get that Miracle Engage, but it's looking slimmer and slimmer chances now. Oh, the tension is just rising to a point. Lolo, where I swear to you, I can almost feel it here in my chair. Joshi's now looking to clear a little bit of vision here. Rizal going to be going forward now, be able to take the blue buff, has the oh, reset, wow. not going to quite use it. Warleader will be able to walk away, but his feet are not glowing blue. No, they really are not. Oh, um, Ulk just able to take away his blue buff as well. It's just gone bad to worse for War Leader. They are able to at least take back the, the big Raptor, but it's a very small win. And I mean, if you look at the vision right now, I mean, it is good that RLS are able to get themselves a little bit of control back there in their top side, but it's the bot side they've got to be worried about. And Rafa, he's lurking. He's got the paranoia on deck for one final push. And if he lands it now, I think the game's over. Definitely think so. It is now do or die time here, man. It's it's the very last game of Squid Game, man. It's all or nothing, win oh, or yeah. die, live or let live. Rafa's looking to clear vision. Remember, he has ulti up, flash on about a 30 second timer. RLS looking to defend the bottom tower. This is dangerous. If we go in, they can absolutely dive here. Zenzen has the range. He does have the poke. We do have War Leader looking to slowly get into position here. Malphite still mid, TP still on cooldown. Yeah, and Rex are going, doing exactly as they were doing. They're holding the choke point. They are choking RLS out of this game. That's another turret. That's the last tier two. Not the last tier two, but it's still it's another turret going down just before the Drake's about to spawn. It's, I wouldn't be surprised if they do. They're still looking for a paper. I wouldn't be surprised if they do get a little bit of a reset off or just wait. Maybe they don't even need to. They're going to hold on to all of the priority they can for this soul. That's the last win condition they need to close out the game, even if, even if they need it. But RLS, they're going to have to go back, lick their wounds once again, just continue to try to scale up. But God, so scary walking into this jungle. Oh, oh you got to watch out, man. Anti going to throw the shard, getting a little bit of a slow here, a little bit of a slow to come out from the misfortune as well. Forcing the searing charge does mean Joshi cannot engage without using his ulti for now. Why, you know, Doctor, they might pull the trigger on this one, man. We might see the paranoia coming out, and there it is going to be oh, right wow. now. Look at the backline play on the misfortune. Meanwhile, a lot of damage going to be soaked up by Demon Girl. We will find Rafa taken down. There's the bullet time, but escape is low. Exhaust is down. Out batteries jumping all over. Everyone explosively going from left to right and everybody will fall and there it is right here right now team rex regalis successfully taking it all the way to game five and taking down the rls nexus and thereby crowning themselves the winner of the helios league inhibitors only up to further delay how long this outro actually is and team rex are victorious what a series, Schnecki. What incredible play from both sides. But I'll be honest, one of the names of the game was the harder the stomp, the harder the next stomp. And this was a brutal game from start to finish. Rex, RLS absolutely showing signs of life. They played incredibly, really stalwart mentals to what, um, from start to finish. But Rex, it was all their game. And it really did stem off of Rafa getting so many um, advantages early on. Great play to him. He stood firm and just Rex... Congratulations, amazing performance, and very deserved winners of the league. Yeah, man. It does definitely appear that um, Rafa did, in fact, by definition, go sicko mode that game. So he did. Very well played, man. <laughs> you know, I, I brought up the, the very first game I ever casted here in the Helios League. It was week three, week four, week five before playoffs. Rafa was very ahead, came a little short, just one game. He still won the series. But it was this game where Rafa said, Schnecki. You have a little more of a doubt one more time. And I swear, we'll take it to next week's finals. And now, thereby, they are going to be playing the winners of the Luna League. Of the grand, grand finals. I don't know what the hell to expect at this point, Lolo. I mean, it's, it's fated, isn't it? Rex came into FOF in order to beat UB. And it's not a foregone conclusion. Let's not count our HBK. They are an amazing team. We saw them destroy uh, BBZ earlier this week. But uh, the, if the fates align, it is going to be that Rex UV final potentially that we've all been waiting for because that's what they came here to do. And that's what they're, they're ready to do. They said RLS, amazing, amazing show. Um, great, great series. But they know what their eyes are on and they're, and they're on UV. <laughs> yeah, they came, they saw, and they conquered. And on that note, guys, we still have to wait and see 
who exactly Team Rex Gregalis will be up against, which will be the winner of the Luna League, which will take place on Monday. It will be between Team UB and Team HBK. And a little birdie told me UB very well may be one of the sole reasons in which Rex decided to go this hard into the Helios mm -hmm. League. So we're going to have to wait and see and find out what happens, who will win, and who Team Rex will play on Monday. But on that note, guys, it is time for us to sign out. Lolo, it's been an absolute pleasure. Production has been phenomenal. Despite all of the mountainsoul.exe <laughs> files inputted into the game design, that will be it for us today. It's reached the bittersweet end. I do believe we might have a winner's interview. But for now, we will go to a quick break, and we'll be back for the winning team's interview. We'll catch you guys next time.
Here we are, folks. It is the end of Season 4 for Friend or Foe Series Helios League, and we are joined by the entire team of our victorious Rex Regalis, our champions for Helios. Uh, welcome, everyone, and congratulations on this big win. Um, is there any anything you would like to say just at the top as we, we celebrate your victory? Oh, that's me. Hello. Yeah, that's okay. you. Anyone, throw, Hello. anyone Hello. jump in. Good job, man. Hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm eating at the same time. Okay, honestly, <laughs> honestly, I just want to give a huge shout out to RLS. Like, we came into this expecting this to be a 3-0. And the amount of improvement that you guys have shown over the past, like, two or three weeks is absolutely astounding how well you've been able to, to grow. And so I really want to say it's been a real honor playing into you guys and like hanging out with you guys and chat and whatnot. Um, and, you know, we did win, but I think on a different day, it's possible you guys could have taken that one. Yeah, let's uh, let let's uh, start setting the table for this series. Um, I think that overall this was a uh, a battle of uh, brothers and rivals here. Uh, I felt it was a, a, t a tightly contested series. Uh, as, as I understand it, you folks uh, had gone back and forth a little bit in the scrims uh, throughout the series, yeah. uh, the season before we came into this. So, what w what was preparations like for a team that you folks were, were so close to uh, coming into a, a, such a monumental matchup here at the Grand Finals? So the things that I was looking at mostly is one, you know, Anti won the best top laner and season MVP, and I think he he deserves it. Uh, he is a very strong laner, and our main concern was making sure that I didn't get run over, and that's why you saw in most games there were at least four top lane bans from both of us, right? And the one time where they didn't ban the Orn, we snap locked it and. You know, it wasn't the reason why we won, but it was definitely a big contributing factor. So the big thing that we always had to do is just make sure I don't get run over in top lane, and then the rest of it is just going to, in theory, just kind of take care of itself. And that's the main thing we were looking at. You know, uh, War Leader and Demon Girl as some of their big playmakers, they kind of neutralized themselves, and we were expecting um, bot lane in particular to either be a slight advantage to us because we should be able to get winning matches most of the time or a bit of a wash and end up being quite a wash just because they kept playing enchanters yeah and shout outs to shout outs to demon girl and escape for putting on a ton of pressure throughout the series like we were we were very nervous about um you know even going into this series we were like okay well you know we're gonna commit a lot of the top lane bans to anti um, is there anything that we're afraid of? And we're like, man, Escape's Misfortune, pretty spooky. Probably don't want to let that one through. Um, and, and it was very scary. Even in that game five, I mean, she topped the damage charge. Just absolutely, you know, blew it, blew it out of the water. So Escape played incredibly well on the character. Let, let's talk a little bit about um, some of the, some of the top side matchups before, and then we'll return back to the, these bot side matchups um, because I do want to talk about how it, it, it seemed like there was a lot uh, of this series that was decided along the lines of the, the the top matchups and the jungle matchups and I felt like coming throughout the the season but especially coming into the series I felt like um, the overall strength of Rex was, um, not just the, 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 the meme was the, the macro team, but also, uh, the, the, the micro team that has the macro 
is is my thoughts on it uh, that I was describing it in my interviews and it, and it was um, for me it felt like when you guys were at your best in this series uh, was when you're able to put uh, jo uh, Joshi in the top side was able to play um, that weak side that weak side matchup and Rafa was a activated with agency and able to to move uh, any kind of lead that he was able to generate around the map. Um, continuous pressure while keeping up in farm. So, so uh, let's start with uh, Joshi, and then we'll go into Rafa. What, what were your thoughts on, on these matchups, especially since you you had the tough matchups into the Gwen, uh, that were the two victories that we were able to see for RLS in the series. And then Rafa, what, what about for you as you're able to uh, to play on some of these carry matchups in the series and transition that power around the map? All right. So there's a lot to unpack there. Uh, yeah, we think the biggest thing that we were noticing was that. It is incredibly hard for a team that drafted a lot of ranged characters to interact with Gwen at all, right? If you're not standing inside that circle, you can't hit her. And we didn't want to stand inside that circle because it meant that we were getting hit by all kinds of other AoEs. And so we identified, once we identified that it is the Gwen that is giving us problems, um, we were able to take it off the table. And it was a major part of why we actually won. I think. I was a little bit surprised at the number of times that I was able to get solo kills on Anti, and then he obviously returned the favor a couple of times. But uh, just having having that ability to just ignore my entire backline was absolutely pivotal in both of the games that they were able to pick up. Yeah, that Gwen sucked to play against. <laughs> like, holy moly! Like, we we picked both lane matchups where, like, okay, you know what? Maybe I can give a little pressure. Uh, put Anti behind a bit and it just did not matter because Anti on Gwen was like holy moly he was 1v9ing a lot of the fights in the games that we lost and so it was like man we gotta we gotta get rid of it and even when it came to game 5 where we're red side and it was like yo either we have to ban Gwen or we have to ban MF and we just said listen I think Dimitri's gonna perform whatever champion he gets uh so even if escape gets mf and he was scary on it i think if we just pivot a full dive composition we can deal with it if anti gets gwen like we just don't have an answer into it um and then for me play more carry champions uh so the very first game i played trundle i didn't get to do shit um <laughs> like I, I was there playing for the team but uh me and josh had a conversation about after game three even i was playing though the graves and i had a really big graves game game two game three i had a lot of farm i was far ahead of war leader but it didn't matter because he had the pressure and he had the agency on the map so i i basically told him was like josh or josh basically told me and doc was like we need you guys to be more aggressive like we need to stop playing uh playing scared to lose and playing to avoid losing and we need to play to win we need to have confidence so I told him, all right, then give me this champion and I'll make plays and I'll, me and Doc will win the game for you. And I think that really changed our mindset for the last two games of the series and it showed. All right, well, let, let's uh, let's transition into the, the mid lane then. And uh, Zenzen, Zen, I want to talk to you because you were able to bring out uh, quite a variety of champions out in the mid lane in, in these matchups, uh, both the, the artillery mages, um, as, as well as the, uh, you know, going hard, uh, trading off the uh, the Akshan matchups. Um, what were your thoughts uh, on this matchup against Pengu Soul in, the, in this five game series and, and how you guys were able to trade in lane? Um, Pengu Soul really surprised me in this series. Um, I especially liked um, how much uh, pressure they put out on me uh, on that Orianna. I think that that is far and away uh, their best character and it was legitimately scary to lean into it and they had a couple of uh really really good shock waves that were crucial to their victories um in a couple of team fights so um huge props to them um on my end uh i'm not gonna lie you know i was excited to play to play these characters um, i felt a lot of pressure from rls's composition uh, that they tried to draft because in general, uh, we think of RLS as a team that that plays best when they're they're playing like frontline meatballs. When they got like the Zack or the Vi or the Malphite, you know these characters that just like slam into you. Um, and control mages that can be very very scary. Um, 
I consider myself very fortunate that I had a really strong Velkaz game. Um, and uh, the Ziggs, I think, was like the perfect champion to cap out the series after I saw four other dive champions. Um, I was like, all right, I need to play something that's got some sort of jump. Um, and, and it ended up working out really well. So, um, yeah, uh, huge props to, to Pengu for, for making it a competitive series. And um, it, it, was, it was a good game. All right, well, let, let's look at the bottom lane. And this was something that uh, certainly had my attention was looking at how we were going to be able to trade the matchups in the bottom lane. Obviously, uh, there there was a certain uh, passing and banning of uh, a particular uh, certain subset of the AD carries, especially the MF and the Aphelios were just constant faces, uh, either on the pick pick list or the ban list. And so, um, and then the... the uh, amount of supports that you put around them uh the the lulu the brahms um the threshes although i don't think we saw thresh in this this case but uh just and all the, the leona is, was certainly something that we saw a lot of um what were your thoughts uh elf battery and why you know doctor on how uh this matchup went uh in the bot lane for you got you folks against escape and demon girl yeah so um i think josh said it a little bit earlier that coming into the series we were kind of feeling that we would have either an edge or it would be pretty even in bot lane and i know on the lounge uh, a lot of people were expecting escape to do pretty well i know brendan was really given the treatment over there to escape how good this guy is on uh, bot lane and i think when you look at semifinals uh for me anyway watching both our semifinals and rls's semifinals was really hard for me to be like well is bot lane really going to be a factor in this series um i myself playing the lane and i don't know how doc feels but uh those first couple games were really really rough uh for my performance and for maybe some of my other teammates but uh escape and demon girl played really really well like above expectation and if I'm gonna have any kind of cope excuse, it's because I haven't really played bot lane in a couple of days, like very seriously. So you know, we, we got to get one in there. But um, the bot lane was super, super fun to play, and I have nothing but like the utmost respect for people like uh, those two from RLS. Just really exceeded expectations, I think, for try to come into grand finals. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Dimitri really said it real there. Um, hats off to Demon Girl on uh, Escape there. Uh, they really did a really, really, really good job of basically just making bot lane just neutralize and just having absolutely no impact. Uh, they just didn't let me do like literally anything for five games straight. Um, yeah, hats off to them. I mean, I, I honestly, I was going in with the expectations of just being able to smash that bot lane real quickly and then just transition to going to a different lane. Um, but they ended up just keeping me there for five games straight, and yeah, it was just not a fun time. It, well, it was a fun time, but it was not a fun time from <laughs> my perspective, so. Hell no, that was not fun at all. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you thought you were, you thought you were going to be done quick, and that you'd just be able to wrap up, maybe, you know, just go, go chill, watch some YouTube, you know. But here it was, the five-game series, the prophesized five-game uh, struggle until the end, but yet... Rex comes out on top. And uh, folks, uh, congratulations to our yeah. season four Helios champions. Um, before... Can I get something in? Oh, no, I was gonna about to say, any before we okay, step okay. away, I want to give the, the opportunity, any final thoughts? Uh, the floor is yours. Uh, congratulations to Rex Regalis. Is there anything anyone on the team has to add before we step away? So this is more of a uh, talking about like League of Legends in general. But the thing that always fascinates me about best of fives is, you know, the draft adaptations and how it changes from game one to game five, right? I don't know what RLS's prep looked like, but in my prep, the champions that I was expecting were going to be key to winning were Misfortune, Oriana, Amumu. And these were going to be the champions that whoever had was going to have a little bit of an edge. And your goal was always to get two of them instead of just one of them. And what ended up shocking me was that the champions that that was true of was not those at all it was gwen nocturne and neither of them or i had like looked into gwen a little bit and like what matchups i wanted to play into it but neither of those champions 
or not, none of the champions that we ended up picking first a lot and like put so much priority on mattered hardly at all. And it was super interesting to see how much more effective uh, teams were as they started to figure out like what champions are really going to be the key playmakers in the series. And I feel like RLS came in to the series with a little bit of a better understanding of what champions were going to be important. And it's part of why they came out to an early lead. Yeah, I want to hop on that, and uh, I know everyone gave like a little shout out to like their lane opponents, um, but I think Warleader definitely deserves because Absolutely. he is not he is not the sixth best jumper. <laughs> He's oh. way better than that. He proved during this playoff season that he is far above. He should at least be considered for top three, if not top two, because Warleader when he's on his game he controls and dictates the map and chokes pressure away from the rest of my team and even when i'm when i was like 80 cs up on him in game three as graves and it didn't matter he still had way more pressure on me than i did so yep. it goes to show that like it, it doesn't matter about like individual advantages in the in the jungle. It's how well you are playing for your team and creating plays and and creating opportunities for your team. And that mindset, war leader, is basically the reason why I had to change my approach to how we played the last two games of the series. So, yeah. I, I I give a shout out to war leader for making me reach my super saiyan mode for the first time. <laughs> this season so because I, I think those last two games was some of the best i played in the entire fof league uh, i do want to say something that'll make war leader really happy or sad unclear the the thing that we said we wanted to do in order to win was take war leader who is uh performing above our expectations and say we want to remove this guy from the game and I think that's how we were able to win games four and five so cleanly is because we were able to find ways to just take him from having so much pressure earlier on in the series and just remove it. But it was really a concerted thing. We were just kind of like, we want to get this guy out of the game. You know what? We got to get some banter in here. Uh, welcome FOF to the Florida dominance. It's been two seasons in a row. You've been dominated by a Florida man ADC. Stay free. Uh, and we already took that dub. It was only a best of one. We already know who it is. Game five, all that matters. Best of one. You got smashed. RLS, we'll see you next season. And uh, UB, we're coming out for you, brother. Yeah, it, I mean, we, we put in the work, so it's time for, for UB to hold up their end of the deal. I mean, we told them that we were going to play them in Super Grand Finals, and they need to they need to hold up their end of the bargain. All right. Well, uh, that I think I think everything else has been said, unless uh, I am yet to be corrected. Uh, but folks, uh, that is going to be it for our season four Helios Champions interview. But I do have good news because. Our runners up, our second place team here in Helios has stuck around and will be joining us also for a team wide interview. We're excited to share that with you. Congratulations to our team here, Rex Regalis, again, season four, Helios champions. And uh, stay tuned, folks. You may be seeing them again somewhat soon. We'll be right back. Oh, my God.
Hello folks, Chris Edgeworth again, joined again by another team from our Helios finals, but this time the runners up, the Restless Leg Syndrome that were able to take Rex Regalis all the way to the end of five games. Uh, thank you so much to Re uh, Restless Leg Syndrome RLS for joining us uh, for this runners up interview. Uh, congratulations on making it all the way to the finals. Unfortunately, it was not the ending that you're hoping for, um, but this was really an awesome showing uh, overall uh, for this season is really exciting to see you folks uh, stopping your way through uh, after joining us from the Mythic League previously, uh, making it all the way deep to these finals. I, and, and it certainly did feel like uh, RLS did have the fighting chance here in these finals. Um, I, I, I think there were some pundits out there that, that might have had it pegged differently, but uh, here we are uh, after a tightly contested uh, three and two, uh, defeat, unfortunately for RLS. Um, but I am joined here by the team. Um, and I do want to start by talking about coming into this game. Um, it, it, anti, if I could ask you, what, what was the team's prep like coming into this series? Um, it looks like you folks certainly did have mm -hmm. a good read on Rex Regalis coming into this series. Um, can you give me some insight on what, what the team was feeling and what your prep was like coming into the series? It's actually kind of interesting because I spent the last week or so practicing Kennen for this series, but we ever never actually got a Kennen angle. So that, that that was kind of interesting. But we did the same thing that I always do when we're coming up towards a team. And we're just like, okay, where are their strong points? How do they win? How do they lose? And I watched all their VODs, you know, I looked into their OPGGs. I was just like, okay, well, you know, we know Joshi is probably going to take the Graves which could make things scary for Gwen. But, you know, if, if I practice enough of it, it should be a matchup I can deal with. And, you know, we just continue to look into things that we thought would be strong points in the series and try to figure out how we can deal with them. And the same thing that we had for Rex at the beginning of the season. We said, hey, they play around Joshi a lot in terms of as long as he can get out of laning phase you know, feeling good, then if he's on a champion that has a high team fight impact ultimate, he can take over the game. And as you can see, you, know, you got like six top lane bans every game. It was wild. And let, let's look at the series and how it turned out. Um, I felt like this uh, this series certainly had an imbalance towards the, the top side matchups, especially um, this matchup, the, the, the Josh uh, angle in the top side, mm -hmm. um, but especially uh, the top and jungle matchups uh, throughout this and how, how uh, they were able to affect the other sides of the map going into this. Um, for, for the two wins I was able to come out for RLS, Antai, you were on the, uh, you're on the Gwen, and um, it felt like uh, Warleader 
for your part, um, in my in my th estimation, it seemed like you're you're doing an excellent job getting able to uh, take the whatever lead you're able to get, whether whether it was uh, a farm lead or just a tempo lead. Uh, or even getting kills and getting that gold and turning it into items, you're doing an excellent job of taking that lead from one lane that you might be able to get and transition it into pressure in another lane. So I was hoping, uh, we'll start with you, uh, Anti. Uh, what were your thoughts on on this matchup, that the pressure that uh, you were up against in, in the top side, and then for you, <coughs> war leader, on this, this matchup against Rafa? So one interesting thing is we actually scrimmed rex like about a week or two ago and funny funny enough i kind of got smashed uh we blind pick like orn in one of the games and then joshi just uh picked something that just like absolutely like stomped me in there and you know th this was actually something that went on through like all three games in our scrims so i was going into it, i was like well i know joshi's really good at laning so i can't just pick random stuff i have to take this completely seriously i need to pick something that's like strong for me and you know right now gwen you know it, there's always a gwen angle she's she's immune half the time so you know why not hey and... Gwen is immune if you didn't know by the way <laughs> yeah and it's honestly it, it's a lot of fun uh playing against joshi i love love laning into that man and it, it's draft preparation laning in game everything you know i cannot overstate enough how much i enjoy playing with joshi and one of the fun parts that i will also say is that joshi one time told me that i play like i always have the 2v1 top lane because you know i play as if you know my jungler's there all the time and I have to shout out War Leader because the way how he plays allows me to play so aggressively so much of the time, and I could not do it without him. War Leader, what about you? Um, yeah, no, it's always about an information game, and I was talking to Lolo about this prior to the game, but a lot of... So, teams usually talk about the way they split up resources in terms of like the gold, which may, which makes a lot lot of sense. But we play around anti, and most of our gold goes to escape. So the question is then, well, how do we play around anti? And the answer is that uh, anti is getting all the resources, or a lot of the resources in terms of information. And most of that's my job. Uh, and just making sure that <laughs> most of the time anti just has the information to know when he can play like a crackhead and when he can't play like a crackhead <laughs> um, love you richard <laughs> uh going into rafa specifically i you know i i play jungle with the mentality that the jungle matchup really doesn't matter that much um not in terms of the players but in terms of the champions in terms of the players um rafa was kind of the target honestly we really thought that when it comes to the way that rex like to play the game they play it very controlled very focused around choke points and they play a really solid focused slow methodical macro game but rafa is stylistically very different from that so we came into this series really focused on trying to catch the moments when rafa is just two seconds ahead of the rest of his team and capitalizing on those moments and we definitely got to do that a few times All right, well, let's take a look at uh, the mid lane matchup. And this is something that certainly had my attention. Um, Pangasol, uh, you had to match up against Zen Zen in this mid lane, and he seemed to have uh, to throw everything in the, ki the kitchen sink at you uh, to, to seem to sort out this matchup. Uh, he was able to bring out the artillery mages, uh, the standard standard uh, zone control mages with Oriana, and then also, uh, you know, that you guys had to trade the actions off and on. Uh, Akshan was something that you certainly were able to pop off on. Uh, what were your thoughts on this matchup against Zen Zen throughout the series? Going into Zen Zen, I was very, very nervous. I I knew Zen Zen was the second best. I played against Zen Zen before. I was, I, you know, I was very. I was I acknowledged that Zen Zen is potentially the better mid laner uh, going into this, and w the game one I 
completely expected it to just be a wash in mid lane. Um, thankfully, it didn't end up being that way, and it gave me kind of a, a morality boost, I guess, um, to just be like, okay, I can actually, I can actually play into Zen Zen. I can actually probably win this, um, and. I, I think that it was just kind of that that beginning for me that um, snowballed into like such a like back and forth um, mid lane between all five games. Um, like it, it it felt more of like a rivalry, like a friendly rivalry thing in mid lane. Uh, if any if anything, um, knowing that you know th these are two auction mains that are in grand finals <laughs> playing Spider Man um, in games three and four um it, it's something we even remarked on uh we, uh, like in game one we were like oh okay so when are we uh trading off our auctions um so going into uh going into uh zen zen i ha i had a uh, very i i i had very high anxiety i guess i could uh, put it as and <laughs> later on it was it was just a friendship building um, with just the way we played, and I'm glad that in, um, in the end, uh, the only thing, the only things we can really say to each other is just the nicest things possible. Let's let's look at the bottom lane, and of course, uh, the the Rex bottom lane had uh, nothing but praise actually to heap upon uh, the RLS bot lane. So escape and Demon Girl. Um, I do want to ask you a little bit about about your matchups. Bottom lane, this was the, there were several picks um, that needed to be monitored down there in the bot lane. Uh, the the uh, picking and banning of the MF, um, the the trading of the Aphelios, as well as uh, there was an exciting game for escape on the Jinx as well. Um, Leona, Nautilus, there was all kinds of enchanters being traded out here. Um, escape and the Demon Girl. Uh, give me your thoughts on this matchup in the bottom side. Wow, um, Alk and Doc, uh, just, that is, I have to put this in perspective, I often do uh, endurance-based, like, long-run, three-hour-plus sim racing, which is physical and mentally strenuous, you need to be at 100% the entire time. Um, I have done uh, multiple, I've been doing sports my whole life, I, I've been exhausted before, this is mental exhaustion that I've never met before. Those guys put so much pressure on us to play well, um, and, and there, there was no room to make mistakes. Uh, they made sure that we, we kept ourselves completely honest. Um, I, I have never been put under that kind of pressure before by a bot lane, um, and I, I think it was amazing uh to, to to really feel that and 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 have to you know kind of rise to that occasion that they were able to put us to but not only that but to know um that my support player is able to keep up with that as well uh, i think that uh, sky you did awesome uh i i think that it, it was incredible that they were able to put us under that much pressure for what has it been four hours straight now um there was absolutely no breathing room in that bot lane and they said like okay maybe we came out and pressed them there i have nothing in my life and i realize i'm young but i have nothing in my life that i can compare to that much mental exhaustion that they were able to force uh and that, that signs of a really coordinated really talented bot lane and I, I think that that showed with how well um alk was able to take those winning games and show up and deal so much damage go completely deathless like he just played an amazing job um i had the opportunity to play with doc this morning actually uh and a really really kind guy um i think that his support looks phenomenal uh i have i'm, I'm lacking words to really say but they did amazingly I think that it's uh, fitting that this uh, this set was played during the Halloween season because we played a couple of psychopaths in the bot lane. The <laughs> amount of times they would just sit in a bush and we're like, okay, yeah, we're fine. They're not here. And then they just, they're there every time. So it was like playing a horror game of League of Legends in the bot lane because at any moment you can just get engaged upon and murdered from a bush. Five nights just at Summoner's Rift. Oh god, five games in Summoner's Drift. It was exactly back. Oh, you you solved it. Yes, exactly. It was 
yeah no they they were consistently testing our mental fortitude they're consistently making sure like okay hey you made this mistake like do you remember like two hours ago when you made this mistake are you gonna do it this time <laughs> and just i have i'm so drained at the end of this and i'm i'm thrilled with the the results i'm so happy that we made it here i think the whole team is happy that we were able to do what we were able to do um i think that really either team could have deserved this and uh they showed up better today and they played so much better today and it was a real learning experience i think for all of us um to to watch and to to experience and to get to play against them and i'm so happy that we were able to take it to five games all right. Well, um, let's. Uh, let, l before we step away, actually, I I'm sorry. Uh, I do want to offer the opportunity for anyone on the team, anything that I haven't uh, given a platform for, anything that you want to shout out before we step away. Any final thoughts? Any shout outs? Any banter before we step away? Man, um, do you want to go, Derek? Um, I would uh, like to say something uh, real sure. quick. Um, you know. Uh, shout outs to my good friend Lineheart. Um, he's what really got me into like competitive gaming as a whole. Um, without him, I wouldn't be playing League of Legends as uh, he's uh, introduced me to League of Legends and has pushed me to have like this competitive mindset. Um, as well as introduced me to Rivals of Aether. And without uh, without him introducing me to rivals of aether um i wouldn't be i wouldn't have met any of these lovely teammates that really pushed me to get better at all the video games i care about um so yeah uh thanks thanks so much for you know getting me this far gabe love you yeah i i want to say you know got to give big big thanks to all the people that were there to support us um starting from the top uh i want to say jack Sander, um Sander you did an amazing job I, I know that you were you were in there initially as a joke but you honestly had some amazing feedback uh thank you for keeping our mentals in check um i want to say that the amount of effort that burst limit coach josh has been putting in over the last week or so to really make sure that we showed up ready for this i think uh rex commented on how much we improved and i think i i i think we all saw uh collectively how much better this team played today um and uh, it's that is a lot down to him making sure that we knew our mistakes we knew how to fix them um and and props to everybody for being able to take that criticism and, and play with it um i want to say a big thank you to uh my girlfriend cass uh a sentence that joshi would never expect me to say um she was able to, <laughs> to to produce some phenomenal logos for us the last two seasons we have another one uh currently uh, and i'm sure that she'll be available if we need another one in the future um and, and and just being such a positive force in the chat that's been amazing um and i also have to say a big old thank you to the ceo uh, of ruby's league server uh mr ruby mr lucas himself um that he was there uh he's been such a supportive person um i want to also say thank you to the people who were there to be subs for us uh specifically toru uh it, it's hard to be you know on the sidelines and and i want to say thank you for always being ready to play uh, she was every single game that we had even if we knew we didn't need a sub she was there she was ready to play uh and that's exactly what you want to know is you want to have that safety you want to know that you can have somebody there uh red when we didn't have uh internet on our support player is ready to show up ready to play a role that he's not comfortable on i want to say big thank you to that and i hope you enjoy uh your time off um and and i hope that we we get to continue to enjoy some time with you um everybody that helped out i'm sure i'm missing a couple names beardsley for being an awesome ref um also eddie for being here for the entire thing i think i mentioned first limit he's done an amazing job if i'm forgetting anybody's names please let me know uh you guys were instrumental this Oscar is this music. is not not a five-man team uh, but thank you so much and anybody in chat right now if you didn't see the message please give me more acronyms for rls we need a name for next season finally and if you guys want to join me you're welcome Another L! Another dumb. Another oh, really <laughs> <bigger! laughs> I gotta say, it wasn't entirely what I was expecting. <laughs> Is that it? I think we're done here, folks. I think you guys <laughs> nailed it. Well, folks, um, here we are. Our, our runners up, RLS, in good spirits. Uh, wonderful folks uh, joining us for this exciting season. Here we are at the end of Helios, but Our league looks sus. No, <laughs> <laughs> we are. <laughs> I see it. I see it now, <laughs> uh, folks. Uh, maybe 
this has been an exciting season, but maybe, just maybe, it might not just be the end. Um, we do, of course, have our Luna Finals, our Grand Finals for Luna coming up on Monday, November the 1st, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, so, folks, please join us then to watch how that turns out against UB versus Team H Block. And, uh, folks, uh, for everyone here at Friend or Foe, I want to uh, thank everyone on the staff who makes everything that we have here on the screen possible. Everyone who makes everything so seamless, so easy for all of our teams, for me especially on the broadcast. Uh, thank you to all of our teams here in Helios that have made this season possible. Everyone who has made what we put on, put on go on and uh, be successful with their, their contributions, their, their seriousness and their effort. We greatly appreciate it. Folks, we will be back on Monday. Join us for our Luna Finals. Congratulations again to Rex Regalis and good night.